we are stressed and we are worried in a sense of what uh, is going to be our future. You know? But we take a day at a time and just be positive. Australia's second most popular city, Melbourne, has gone into a second lockdown following a resurgence of coronavirus cases in the state of Victoria. About 5 million residents will not be able to leave home for six weeks except for essential reasons. We ask a Malaysian living there what it is like to go back into lockdown. You know, it is, it's still shocking even though you, had, you feel that uh, everything was actually in control. There was cases that started from two cases. You still thought, okay, they said it's all there. And then uh, all of a sudden, um, you know, you've got one cluster that opens up and it started going from 75 cases to 90 to 100. And then, uh, you know, just a pattern of 100 cases. And here we are in the second lockdown. So I think in, in Victoria now, it's, it's, uh, we can't travel into state. Uh, we cannot travel overseas. So we are pretty much in a bubble. Um, and you can really feel it, you know, there's no tourists coming in this, uh, you know, the, the main central business district. Melbourne's very quiet um, for what it usually is. Um, Arif is also the co-founder of Sijori Malay Eatery, which is located at the suburb of Melbourne. The restaurant serves traditional Malay dishes found in the Southern Triangle of Singapore, Johor and Indonesia's Riau Islands. He said small businesses have had to learn how to adapt to the new normal, but many are concerned about the effects of the second lockdown. Starting this restaurant, I mean, it was a venture between uh, me and my wife, and we just uh, had just a, a simple thing that we just wanted to uh, promote Malaysian cuisine here in Australia and uh, to the world globally. That was pretty much it, and um, uh, it was it was never really about the money in a sense. But you know, now that they closed it down again because of the lockdown, we got to shift back primarily doing dining and takeaway, which is only two revenue streams that you could survive on, you know, so you're just closing up um, one portion of what uh, can sustain uh, our restaurant. Is it at a point maybe like you can only see past like the next month or so and if it doesn't improve, like, you know, is there a possibility of it closing down? Like, what, what's the situation? We are stressed and you know, we are worried in a sense of what uh, is going to be our future, you know, if we, if we can maybe keep the store or the shop open. So I think mentally, it's, it's, it's a thing that you just have to keep um, telling yourself that, look, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not your fault or anything in that sense. It's, everybody's going through it. At the same time, you've also got to um, kind of look upon yourself and say that, look, there's people in worse situations than yourself, you know, so it's not the worst thing to happen to yourself. So I think um, we're, very, we're very lucky here in Australia. You know, we, we take a day at a time and just be positive. Arif also thanked the Australian government and his landlord for providing some assistance. In the meantime, Sijori Malay Eatery will do all it can to stay afloat. Malaysian food abroad is comfort, you know, so seeing people and when we deliver say like nasi lak bungkus to people's houses here in the middle of winter, you know, you can really see that it actually brings up people's spirits as well. So it's, it's you feel that uh, it's not all about the money after a while, you know, it's just kind of like keeping together for the community as well. Australia has so far recorded more than 9,000 infections and more than 100 deaths.